Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is the anonymous film critic uh, coming to you with the first review on this, uh, I don't know, series, podcast. It's my first time doing this. This was one of these things of like, hey, let's just go for it and see where it goes, see if it takes off. So the film we're going to be reviewing today is Vox Lux or Vox Lon Trier, as I've been calling it, <laughs> which I guess we'll talk about a little bit as we go through this review. Uh, so this is actually the second feature film directed by Brady Corbett. He is an actor turned director. Uh, he actually won, I believe, the Best Debut Film and Best Director Award at the 72nd Venice International Film Festival with his movie The Childhood of a Leader. So this is actually his second film uh, that he's actually done. Um, I really, really enjoyed this movie um, for a lot of reasons. Uh, it, it is in no way, shape, or form. Is it a perfect film? Uh, I hate spoilers, so I'm going to do my best to review this film and encourage all of you to watch it. Um, you know, run, don't walk to your nearest streaming service to watch Vox Lux. So basically the film uh, stars, uh, you could say it stars Natalie Portman, but I think that'd be unfair to uh, Rafi Cassidy, who is also in the film. So the film stars Natalie Portman and Rafi Cassidy as Celeste Montgomery. So Celeste is a young girl who uh, has a moment of I don't know if it's heroism. I don't know if it's martyrdom that happens uh, during a very violent traumatic event that happened in her teenage years. Like something happens. I, I hate spoilers, so I know I'm being vague, but there is a traumatic event that happens and she emerges as a hero in some weird twisted way despite this violent tragedy that went on in her life. And it's a really interesting take on celebrity, the viral nature of our culture, and we kind of follow this woman who is ascends to this level of stardom through tragedy and we kind of follow her whole career and then it kind of morphs into this film that just kind of talks about the realities of being a pop star it talks about many things but the realities of being a pop star uh being a woman in that position uh what it's like from the business side you know when business and art clashes you know, what that is like. Um, and that's really, I guess, the core of the film. Again, I hate spoilers, so I'm going to try to do my best. So apologies if I'm being vague. Uh, the, the film has a lot of really interesting characters, and it, it, it's kind of a, a really interesting... The way that the film kind of evolves and the way the film progresses is you kind of get these little snippets of all of the different things that you would experience when you're being a pop star, particularly a woman. And so you have Jude Law, who plays uh, the manager, um, who I, I believe that's the he's never really given an official name, but he plays the manager and he is actually put in charge of guiding uh, Celeste Montgomery, the, the character's career from when she's a teenager all the way through adulthood. Um, you have uh, Stacey Martin, uh, who is a performer who I really, really love. I've seen her in, in quite a number of films. Probably my favorite, of course, would be Lars von Trier's Nymphomania. Uh, she was also in Godard Mon Amour, um, and there was another film uh, that I forget, a French film that I saw her in. Uh, I think it was Lady in the Car, Lady in the Van with Glasses that she was in very briefly, which I also enjoyed her in. So she's a really compelling performer. Um, she plays uh, Celeste Montgomery's sister, Ellie. Um, she plays both the younger version and the older version, while Rafi... Cassidy, um, who we actually also know from a movie I loved, uh, Killing of the Sacred Deer. She played the daughter in Killing of a Sacred Deer. She's also a very impressive, compelling performer. She plays the younger Celeste Montgomery, and Natalie Portman plays the older Celeste Montgomery. And one of the cool things that they actually do, again, referencing to what I think the, is, is clearly an influence on this film, which is the great Lars von Trier, uh, Rafi Cassidy actually plays young Celeste, and then she actually ends up playing uh, Natalie Portman's teenage daughter in the film as well. So she kind of has one of those dual role type of dynamics. So it's a really cool moment that they have. Um, so to kind of get down to the performances, like I, Natalie Portman is clearly an incredibly talented actress. She's been famous for a long time. And as we all know, I, I believe she's won an Academy Award. Um, I have never necessarily been drawn to Natalie Portman that much as a performer, like not to the point where I would say like, hey, this is every movie she's in I want to see or she really draws me or I find her to be incredibly dynamic or, or enigmatic or whatever on screen. Um, but I have to say this is probably my favorite Natalie Portman performance, right? Like I think that she does, she's really daring in this role um, and to the credit of the director, 
the daringness wasn't like, hey, she went nude, right? Or, hey, she did something really raunchy. I think she really goes places. And, and I think what's really cool about seeing a performer like Natalie Portman in this role is that you could imagine that this kind of probably in some way, shape or form mirrors her own life, right? Remember, Natalie Portman was someone who was making films, I believe, when I believe she did The Professional, uh, Luc Besson's The Professional, I believe when she was 12 years old or maybe even younger than that. Um, so this is clearly a woman who's gone through adolescence, teenage years, early 20s, uh, 30s, all to the point where she is now. And I think that there's probably a lot that she's pulling on from her own life. Um, it, it's a really fascinating film. And, and I think that there's a lot that the film deals with. I think, it, of course, it talks about celebrity. It talks about the viral nature of our culture. It talks about what we subject women in positions of power to. I think it talks about, as I mentioned before, you know, that that horrific moment that I think every artist goes through when business and art clashes, right? And the desire to want to be viewed as a certain artist, uh, but at the same time, wanting financial success and also being basically feeling like you're indebted to the people who helped you get to that point, right? Feeling like you owe your manager and you owe your publicist and you owe, you know, your songwriter, which is actually a really compelling part of the film that I don't want to give away. But there's the, the dynamic of, you know, is Celeste really the star that the public view she is? Is she really the the creative you know force behind behind her celebrity and behind her music and all of these catchy pop songs um it, it's a really fascinating film it also also what, what i think it does really well there's also a scene that where they even dive into the role that the media plays right and and the idea of what we attribute to celebrities and and the the expectations and the strains and the i guess the weight that we put on celebrities as fans and like how much of like, you know, the idea of like, say, using film as an example, like if, if, a, if a filmmaker puts a violent film out there, is it their responsibility that people misinterpret the film? Like, is it the filmmaker's fault that a film gets misinterpreted in the same way? Is it an artist's fault? Is it a musician's fault if their lyrics are misinterpreted? So I found all of that really interesting. There's a great scene uh, in the film with Natalie Portman and uh, Christopher Abbott, another actor who I really, really love. You may recognize him from uh, Girls, and, and he was in a film that I just saw recently, which I loved, called uh, Sweet Virginia. Um, he's a really awesome, compelling actor. Um, and there's a great scene where he plays a journalist, and he's kind of pressing uh, Celeste over something that has happened that seemed to have been influenced by her music, right, and her career, and, and her the way that she inspires like people and, and, and another violent act had happened. And I think he's kind of pressuring her as to why and what her thoughts are on it. And, and it was a really great scene of this feeling of, Hey, is it my responsibility that people may act violently or do the wrong thing just based on what I say or do in my lyrics? So I don't know. I thought this was a really, really fascinating film. Um, again, it's not perfect uh, in a lot of ways. Um, I, I think that there's things that the film could have done better. I think Brady Corbett is clearly a very, very young uh, director. He's directed two films. Um, but I think that what he clearly has a way with is actors. Um, and what I really loved about this movie, to go back to the joke that I made uh, originally in this uh, in this video, um, was I was jokingly calling this film Vox Launcher because I think... The reason why I love Lars von Trier so much and the reason why um, he is one of my favorite film directors is that I, I think Lars von Trier does dark comedy better than anyone. You know, drawing humor from the darkest, the darkest of places. And I think I, I would be shocked if Brady Corbett didn't say that he was highly influenced by Lars von Trier. Um, he even has actors in this that have been present in Lars von Trier movies. Um, of course, I'm talking about Stacey Martin, who played the lead in the Nymphomaniac films. Um, seriously, there's some moments in this movie that are, are really, really darkly comic. Um, very, very funny. And, and I think a lot of that has to be attributed to uh, Natalie Portman's performance. Um, you know, my, my flaws with the film are, I, I, I think that the dynamic between... Celeste and Ellie, uh, played by Stacey Martin. Uh, I, I wish that he went a bit deeper. I actually found that to be one of the most compelling parts of the film was, you know, seeing this breakdown or the building up and the breaking down of this partnership of these two sisters and, and what it's like when you're the other one, right? You know, I, I actually felt like I could have seen a whole movie just about Eleanor, right? You know, the, the, the sister of the pop star. Like, what is it like when you're the other one? Like, like especially, and I think what they imply is that Ellie is actually the older sister, right? Which is actually kind of quite comical because I believe that 
I would imagine that uh, Stacey Martin is younger than Natalie Portman, or she's definitely been famous uh, for far less uh, time than Natalie Portman has. Um, but overall, I, I really, really enjoyed this film. I was able to get through it in one sitting. I was never worried about the time. Um, and to speak about the pop songs, I, I think one of the things that they did in the film was they have a lot of original pop songs, right, that are just in the movie, and the songs are incredibly catchy, right? Like, the music is really, really, really impressive. And... Um, what I think the, the film did a really great job of, with, which I think every film like this should do, is that it doesn't let the characters off the hook, um, but at the same time, it does humanize and sympathize with these people. And, and I remember actually when I first finished watching this film, I called up a friend of mine and I said, man, it's like when you look at the lifestyle that a public figure has to live, um, the constant flying from city to city, waking up, doing press, rehearsing and then doing a live show, a highly energetic live show, you're just like, of course these people are on drugs all the time, right? <laughs> like, of course these people are, you know, like constantly, you know, looking for ways to, 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 to self-medicate, looking for ways to get the edge, looking for ways to stay awake. And I, and I think it actually is a great emblematic moment of that, but I think it does that while at the same time, pointing the finger at us as the audience and as the fans and, and as the people who judge and critique, you know, people that are public figures, especially pop stars and especially female pop stars. And so um, overall, I thought this was a super effective film. Um, again, uh, this film not, not be for everybody. I, I think that most of the critics were a bit 50 50 on it, um, but I really, really love this film. Um, it was everything that I, I thought it was going to be. I think there were really cool surprises in it. Um, and I think that Brady Corbett is, is clearly an incredibly talented filmmaker who has a really bright future. And I'm really curious to see what his next film is going to be. Um, and speaking of a bright future, Rafi Cassidy, uh, who plays... Uh, Celeste and also plays Natalie Portman's teenage daughter. Uh, she also has an incredibly bright future. I'm a huge fan of Stacey Martin. And like I said, uh, this is without question my favorite, favorite Natalie Portman uh, performance that I've seen on screen. Uh, maybe since The Professional or maybe since V for Vendetta. Um, but uh, overall, I, I really would recommend this film. Uh, as I make this recording, I believe that it's available on Hulu. So if you have Hulu, definitely go and check it out. If you don't have Hulu, uh, go to your local Redbox or rent it off Amazon. Uh, but definitely would recommend Vox Lux for and uh, is, again, if you're a Lars von Trier fan, uh, this is definitely one that you would would definitely enjoy. All right.